I gotta go. Long story short, you're probably fine. Sorry, man. No worries for that late. Let's go. Oh my god, what's going on? Seriously? Can I change the music? No. There he is. My shoes. Now those are called. Let's do this. Come on. Sweet, right? Um, um, so we're all one team. We already know, I don't know how many of you saw that the door price for number one and number 300 to enter the room is lunch with the mayor. So we already have our number one, and we're going to thank him. I don't see him in the room right at this moment, but it's Les Holland. I had a hard time deciding who, how was I going to figure out number one, but I walked in the building this morning at 6.30, Les was sitting there. And uh, so Les Holland, if you don't know him, he's the uh, pastor, senior pastor at Trinity Baptist, and he actually made this room happen for us today at no cost. So when Les comes in, I'll go, Les, and everybody will go, Les, and me, you know. And uh, we need to thank him for, for making this happen. He's a great guy. So, my name is Ann Helke, we haven't met before, but I think I know almost everybody in the room. And I'm the liaison for the faith-based initiative here in the city. And this is our fourth convening, our winter convening. And we already, this will shock a lot of people, but we already have our spring, summer one planned. So we'll be able to announce that at the end. And a place, we never do that, but we got that today. So we're getting better at this. Um, couple things. You're on your own this morning in terms of being adults and needing more coffee and using the restroom and things like that. So if you don't know where the restrooms are, you go out the door and they're immediately to the right so you don't have far to go. But we're not going to be taking breaks. We're going to be working straight through. And so just when you feel those things that you need to do, you do those things. Right? Go. So um, one of the things that we're going to be utilizing this morning, and he's already got it up, we're going to be using a polling system. Some of you have done that with me before. How many have done that before? Sweet. So um, then you'll know what to do. So our polling system today, you dial or call. I can't even believe I said dial. What age is me? <laughs> you uh, text SA Conversations to 2233. Three, three on your phone, and we're going to have two test questions here in a minute. Hey, Sarah. So, Sarah, what district do you serve in? Where's the museum? District five. All right. All right. So we're going to test this. Is everybody working on our polling? Again, text S A conversations to two two three three three. And while everybody's doing that. Our registration is a little different this morning, so you'll find name tags on the tables. I encourage you to put your first name at least there so you can learn each other's names faster. There's also a sheet of paper there that we're going to have to be talking about in a little bit, but we're going to appreciate it if you fill that out. Okay, so our first test question is, in one word, how are you feeling right now? So just... Put that in your text and push sound. How are you feeling right now? Can somebody help? Can you raise your phone? Maybe somebody at your table can even help you. Knows how? Uh, they don't either. Hang on a minute. Here comes Sarah. She's jumping in. See, she's interactive, just like the Disney. Okay, we got some sleepy people. Great, okay. Well, ready? no one put up their wet. Did anybody get damp outside? I hugged a couple people who kind of did. Again, it's essay conversations to two, two, three, three, 
Three. Hi, Sally. Hi, Sally. You're so, what district, Sally, do you serve in mission? Do you work out of your home? So that's district. Yeah. Out of Abla? Rosalind, what district is Abla in? There's another one over here. They've developed another one. Okay, um, if you missed this first one, that's fine. We're going to go to question two. So this is answering the question right now. In what city council district do you do your mission and work? Where do you spend most of your time working and serving? Now, some of you I know work out of your home office and serve all over, so that district might be where your home office is. But I live in District 2, I work all over, but my office is in District 1. So I would be sitting at a table with a 1 on it. And we can kind of tell even by looking, because we've got this set up just like San Antonio, by the way. So our, our west side of things, it tells me that, yeah, we got to like do some more outreach that direction. Well, thank you for that. We're going to be doing some more polling throughout the, the event, and that way you'll be hearing about what everybody's talking about, which will be really great. Um, I want to give you what we call a mission minute. We're going to have a couple of those. Um, this one is about mapping and services and community that count. You're going to hear a lot today about our geography and topography, our maps, you're all sitting by your districts. There are copies of those maps at your table that you might want to use throughout today. Um, but what we're also trying to do in the faith-based initiative is that we're able to use the mapping and the data to start to focus where we're working. A great example is in District 3. We have a pilot project there for homeless and hunger. And that Homeless and Hunger team, Action Team, is encouraging congregations to set up as resourcing centers to people in need of housing and food and that type of thing. But 1,450 congregations across the city is a, is a big number to get your head around to encourage them to become resourcing centers, right? So the team decided, let's go smaller. So we discerned that District 3 was in, in need in this area, so we went to District 3. There are approximately 121 congregations in District 3. That's more doable than 1450, right? Right. So then the councilwoman gave us the areas in that council district where there was the most need. There are eight hot spots. We put those onto a map. They formed bubbles. And then we looked in those bubbles to see what congregations were in there. And there were 30 congregations in the bubble. Now we're getting even closer, right, to being able to do something that's more doable. The other thing that we did, though, is that we, with the uh, food bank, which also provided our food this morning, with the food bank, they gave us the pantries, the food pantries in District 3, and we threw those on the map. And do you know what we found? There were no food pantries in the bubbles. All the food pantries were outside of the bubbles. Now, I'm not a map reader, but that, I, I can figure that out. So we pulled together just January 30th. We sent out an invitation to all 120 congregations in District 3. We spent extra effort inviting those 30 that were in the bubbles. 12 of the 30 came. That's 10% of the 120. It's 40% of those places that are most in need. And in a week, four of those congregations were already developing as a resourcing center. Three of them were setting up food pantries in less than a week. Cool, right? So that's why this information is so important to all of us. So at your table also, there's a piece of paper that says at the very top, tell us about the congregation. And you can fill that out this morning. If you're not, I know like Sarah's here from the museum, so you can just organization. So it's congregation or organization. But in our data, we're also collecting all the service that congregations and organizations are providing in their community. 
And you can really help us, this is your registration, you can really help us by filling that out this morning and, and handing it in along the way. That would be really great. And all that is going to add up. And we're eventually going to put it all into an app that by zip code you'll be able to find whatever help you need, whether you need it or you're hoping something else. The question, what one step might you intentionally take to integrate an aspect of Christine's work into your mission and work? <laughs> and our tech guy put, don't be evil. But somebody put one. Not sure what that means. But come up with like one to three words. What's one step that you might take to intentionally integrate an aspect of Christine's work into your mission and work? Make it short so we can kind of all educate my congregation. Awareness building. Organizing churches to advocate for community needs. Stop waiting for change and advocate for others. Advocacy. Integrate area churches. Include and volunteer trainings. Wow, that's good. We are taping this today, by the way, so you'll have access to both Christine and Molly's later. Address funding for schools. Present this info in church meetings. Share essential information in congregations. Education. We're getting a lot on education here. Go out. Habitat for Humanity. I uh, couldn't read that one fast enough. <laughs> Connect with other ministries. That's why we're sitting, sitting at the tables we do. So remove all school boundary lines. Ooh. There's a project. <laughs> Support and advocate for affordable housing. Include medical needs. Partner with, uh, I can get that one fast enough. Greg Christine, do a community conversation at the Museum where donors, education leaders, neighborhood associations, and et cetera. Look at Sarah. She's right there in the back. You can go talk to her. Anyway. <laughs> advocate for legislative initiatives. Christine, how are you feeling about this? What is her work in our district? What district is that? You can enter that number, by the way, so we know. Haven for Hope. Take responsibility. Ah, uh, the ability to respond. What a gift. Great. Isn't it good to kind of hear what everybody's thinking and feeling across the room? I think it is, so. All right, um, we're going to have another commercial. Some of you missed the Toyota One Team commercial, so Google when you get home, it's really worth it. But we're going to watch another commercial here. Make hope contagious. There's a good one. Are you working on it, Gil? Got it. This is the State Farm Neighborhood of Good. And I invite you to watch it carefully.
you doing? Visit statefarmsneighborhoodofgood.com to volunteer in your community. So you don't have to call State Farm. You can just do that right here, by the way. <laughs> but um, while you were busy talking, we handed out some pamphlets at your table. I don't know if you're aware, but in the first day of our new city council, the first resolution that passed unanimously is that San Antonio is a compassionate city. That's what that pamphlet is about. It's about being already a compassionate city, but about becoming more of a compassionate city as well. On the inside of the front cover, you will see the resolves from that resolution, so I spared you of all the whereas's, although there were some really fun ones, because the Spurs are the first and only compassionate NBA team. Yay, Spurs! Anyway, that's the one I always think. But um, anyway, so, and then as you read through that, it will also describe to you the compassion movement that is global. You keep reading through, you'll see all the cities uh, that are now officially signed on as compassionate cities. And basically, compassion is based on the ethic of reciprocity, which is also known as the golden rule and the most common form of wisdom and note in all the world religions. You will find some of those uh, in the inside back cover. And on the very back cover, you will see the Charter for Compassion, which I think is probably one of the most profound documents written in our age. So our city is about that, recognizing where we are compassionate and then utilizing treating others the way we wish to be treated in all things. I want you to know that our mayor and his staff have all been trained in compassion with systems, specifically with policy and decision-making processes. That is amazing. And so all the work that we're doing in the faith-based initiative is all about treating others the way we wish to be treated. So we, we have eight, and I already mentioned one, the homeless and hunger team, and they're trying to encourage congregations to be resourcing centers where they are for the community where they're living. Uh, we have a, a literacy team, and they're encouraging congregations in geographical proximity to schools who are in need to be, you know, become reading buddies and therefore developing relationships and therefore providing the number one asset needed for someone not only to survive but to thrive and that's another human being, specifically an adult who cares. We have eight initiatives like that. One thing in intergenerational poverty, homeless and hunger, immigration and refugees, literacy, um, mental health. They're doing some fabulous things. Doug's going to wave his hand if you want to know more about that. Mental health, public health, children in foster care, and religious discrimination. So we're doing some really great work, and we can talk more about that at the end if you want to know more about it. But um, the one thing, uh, let's see, I'm giving you my mission minute. You want to go ahead, Gil, on that? Um, the one thing I want to invite you into is the next slide, our urgent action alert. One of the things that the faith community in San Antonio is notorious for is helping. The other thing it's notorious for, it doesn't always help smart. So when Harvey comes, we decide we need to collect tonnage of bottles of water. Not helpful. So one of the things that we've been working on is how can we inform each other specifically about the specific needs and where they go. And so now you already have practice with the polling, so I'm going to invite you to sign up for the Urgent Action Alert. And I have one story, one, I mean we have a couple stories, but one in particular that's really easy. This text will come to you hopefully no more than once or twice a month. It's called the Urgent Action Alert, but it will be redefined as the Emergency action alert when there is like a Harvey that comes to town. And so in the emergency, you might get a text or two a day, but you're going to get specifically what's needed, specifically where it's needed, and specifically who to contact. So we're really going to be working together. So the one story I have, our first cold snap was at the end of October this past year, and a lot of the places found out instantly that they didn't have enough blankets or coats or winter clothing for when there was the next cold snap. Weird, that was the end of October. We sent out an urgent action alert on the first Sunday of November, and it was 85 degrees out, which was kind of, you know, San Antonio humor, right? We need blankets, and we need winter clothing and coats. 
went out November 5th. And then there's a guy in the back of the room, and Bruce is going to wave his hand, Church of the Latter-day Saints. He did some, he got that text, he did some talking, and he talked to the people up north who know what it means to need blankets and winter coats and things. And then what happens, a semi-truck pulls up at Haven for Hope with over 35,000 pounds of brand new blankets and clothing bundled by sizes that we can just shelf and share when we need them and undo them when they come. Wow. So, I invite you to sign up for this urgent action alert now. Um, this one, you text COMPASSION and the number is five five and three zeros, five five zero zero zero, just like you did with the polling. And you can always opt out of it. If you really get tired of all of it, you can, there's a thing on each text that you can opt out whenever you want. Okay? 55000, zero, 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 and you text the word compassion to that number. So, I want to hear stories if, if you do something with one of those. All right.